Reading Warriors and welcome back. I'm really excited for this video as this is my top 10 books from 2020. So initially when I got this video idea, I was like, oh my word, I should do the top 20 books of 2020 because, you know, 20, 20, 20, it all makes sense. But I kind of figured that would be a lot of books to talk about in one video and honestly this year I don't think was good enough reading wise for me to have 20 books that I want to talk about as the best books of the year. So obviously this was a very hard year for everyone for a multitude of reasons and I am no exception to this. Um, and so I did not read as much this year as I was hoping to, but also I felt like what I read this year was not as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Um, granted, I did kind of do something very different this year than what I have in the past in terms of reading, and so it was very interesting, it was very different, so I'm hoping next year will be better. But that also just means that this video is only going to be 10 books, the top 10 books of 2020. Now I'm just going to go ahead and get right on started with this video. The first book on this list should be no surprise, as I've talked about it quite a bit recently as I recently finished it, but it is one of my favorite books of this year and currently holds a 5 out of 5 stars, and that is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I love this book because I love the magic system in it. She has a pair of magical scissors, however, she is not inclined to use them all that much because she wants to get by on talent alone. What talent am I talking about that involves scissors? Well, glad you asked. So this book is about a girl named Maya who is the daughter of one of the best tailors in the land. However, she cannot work as a tailor because she is a female. And so she, her family gets called upon to partake in a competition that the emperor is hosting to find the new imperial tailor. She dresses up as her brother to enter the competition. And that's only the first half of the book. Um, but I really enjoyed this book because I loved the competition aspect of it. I loved the characters. Um, I felt that they were very well developed. I loved the world building. The thing about this world is that they had just come out of a war and the way they're kind of resolving this war is through a marriage that not everyone wants to happen. So I really appreciated the world building, the magic system, because the magic system isn't super overpowering, but it's definitely there and I really do like our main character. And so, and the romance in this is not bad. Like, it is kind of a more tropey romance, but I also didn't mind it like I normally would in a book like this, so props for that as well. <laughs> then the next book that I read this year is also one of my all-time favorites. Again, I believe it's still sitting on 5 out of 5 stars. A lot of times when I finish a book and I really like it, I'll put it at 5 out of 5 stars, and then after a certain amount of time I might knock it down, but these books are still at 5 out of 5 stars since I've read them, and I am talking about Serpent and Dove. I read this book this past summer. I It took me two days to listen to it over audio because I was just constantly like, I want to listen, I want to listen, I want to know what's happening. And I appreciated this book because it is about a witch who at the very beginning is forced to marry a witch hunter. The thing is, she knows he's, she knows he's a witch hunter. He doesn't know she's a witch. And she has a lot of fun. Um, she is an extremely sarcastic, very funny, very improper woman for the time period. You know, she is not afraid to show her ankles or dress up like a boy or say words she's not supposed to. And so she just has so much fun pressing the buttons of her husband and the people around her husband's line of work who all have very conservative uh, gender roles. Um, in this society. I am losing my voice, so if my voice sounds like it's being lost in this video, that's because it is. <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed the book because the banter between the characters was amazing, and I really, I loved the fact that they got married at the beginning, and it seems like it would be an enemies to lovers, that's what it would seem like, but I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm just saying. And so I really appreciated how the author went about that whole situation, you know, it's it's not, you know, it's, it's, marriage is not something that's generally mentioned in a lot of YA books with romance elements in them, you know, it's just never something that's ever mentioned or talked about, so I really appreciate that that actually took, that this book decided to do it differently, and it's like, you know what, the whole point of it is that they're going to be married, and how 
weird and funny that is. And so that's a huge reason why I appreciated the book as well as, like I said, good character development. Um, wasn't too much of a magic system, but that became more prevalent near the end. Um, so that's why I'm really anxious to read Blood and Honey and I'm very mad that I haven't read Blood and Honey yet. But I will get there because, oh, I left on such a cliffhanger. <sighs> and that's another thing. I love books that end on cliffhangers because it really makes me want to read the next one. And that is just a huge thing for me. So that would be book number two on this list. Now, I say that's book number two on this list, but there really isn't too much of a prevalent order. It's not like Spin the Dawn was the best book that I read this year. I think it's really hard to take the my top ten books and put them in that sort of order. I kind of didn't want to. But I have to tell them to you some way. And so next we're going to move on to number three, which was Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the final book in the Air Folk trilogy. And I sat there and I listened to the audiobook in one sitting. I loved this book. I really, I loved the trilogy. I feel like this book was a little short. Um, I believe it has four out of five stars, not because I hated it, or I, I'm obviously not, I didn't hate it. Um, not because I thought there was anything that was bad. I just feel like it was lacking in depth and kind of meat, but that was also because it's very short. Like, I kind of wish she had taken, Holly Black had taken a little more time to really flush out um, the events. But because it was the third in the trilogy, the characters were already beautifully fleshed out and the relationships were phenomenal. And the ending, again, I'm not spoiling, I'm not giving spoilers, I'm not going to spoil anything of any of these books. But I did appreciate the ending. So I, I really did love this book. I thought it was such a nice, quick, easy read, even though I wish it wasn't as much as an easy read. But hey, I loved Jude and I loved Taryn. So I think they both, they both capture the main values of the Fae uh, within the two of them, of Jude being the very tough kind of militarized, but then Taryn representing the more intellectual tricks that they like to play, so loved it. Now the fun thing about this next book, book number four, is that I read it, I loved it, I talked about it a lot, and then I took a break because I was like, oh my word, I'm talking about this book all the time, I need to stop. And that book was An Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard. Yes, it has made the list, it is still at five out of five stars. I read this, like I said, this past summer, and I really loved it, and I'm so looking forward to the next one, which should be coming out next year, I believe. I think so. Um, but this is really cool because it has to deal with a bunch of houses, and that there is one representative from each house, and whoever wins the competition gets to be the leader of the houses of all different kinds of magic until... Uh, and the competition is actually also a great way to start your own house because if you are a person with magic who is already in this community and you don't want to belong to the house that you do or you're maybe even an outsider to the community and you want to get in, the best way to do that is to enter the competition, enter in your house, the house that you are making up, and then if you win you get to start your house and then you get to be the leader. So like, hey! But I loved this because this follows a girl who is a badass main character. Like, I loved her. I loved the writing style of this book. I could not put it down. So the main character's name is Sydney, and she has very strong power, but she kind of takes everyone by surprise because no one really knew where she come from, where she came from, and what, she, what motives does she actually have? Even the reader is like finding this out as you're reading the book. And so I just, I went on such a journey with this book and oof, I loved it. I really did love it. Like I said, I love the writing style, I love the character development, I love the world building. Like it hits, it hits all those for me. Then the next book is a book I've talked a lot about this fall season because I do feel like it is a great fall book, but I also have to say a disclaimer that this is the first book in a series and I have not read the rest of the series, but if you watch my video about series I've started and haven't finished but want to, I can explain more there about why this is. But the book I'm talking about is Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and McGuire. This book was just full of magic, 
even if it was taking place in the real world because it's the idea that children go through doorways where they're when when they are younger and the world you could go into is who knows if it's uh, like a crazy world if it's a dark world if it's a fun world like I was getting some Alice in Wonderland vibes but I was also getting like the underworld vibes from some of these and so it just so this book just felt like I was reading a murder mystery fairy tale. And yeah, there are so many more books in the series that I really want to read. I just haven't gotten there yet, but that definitely made the top. The funny thing is that I loved this book, but I know a lot of people who didn't and a lot of people who did. So it's up to you whether you think that children solving a murder after coming back from living in a different world, which all the worlds are different, sounds interesting to you. Now this next book takes me all the way back to February when I read a genre that I was like, oh, I've never liked this genre, but I'm going to read it anyway. And then I read it and I was like, I still don't like this genre. So it's quite amazing that a book from this genre actually made the list of one of my top 10 favorite books. The genre is romance and the book is Red, White and Royal Blue. Yep, I've talked about it quite a bit before, but I mean, I mean, this is a video talking about my favorite books. So I'm going to say a lot of books that you may have heard me talk about before. But Red, White, and Royal Blue is where the son of the President of the United States and the Prince of Wales have a enemies-to-lover-esque relationship. And it's so cute. Oh, it's an LGBTQIA plus community-friendly book. Oh my gosh, they were just absolutely adorable. Alec is like that adorable, lovable, frustrating human being. And then the Prince of Wales, Henry, is like that lovable, perfect yet not perfect type character. And so it was just so much fun to read about. Like that's the kind of romance I want. Every other book I read in February, not so much. But that one warmed my heart. I almost want to read it again, which is so surprising, but at the same time, it was that good. And then moving on to the seventh book on this list already, I have to say is Children of, I'm gonna mess it up, Children of Virtue and Vengeance. I always want to say Vice and Virtue, but that is a different book. But that is the second book in the uh, series by Tomi and the Yemi, and I read this again very early on in the year as I, I read it very soon after it came out. And again, I am so looking forward to the next one, but I love that one. So that one is very interesting because it is kind of based off of West African mythology. Basically, they live in the place that they refer to as Orisha, but it's kind of like Nigeria, but like they don't specifically say Nigeria, but they do say Lagos, which is the capital. And so, and so it's very cool because it follows this community um, called the Magi and they are very identifiable by white hair and it basically means that they have magic and but the king was like people who have magic are scary and therefore are evil and therefore must be oppressed Sad. and so it's basically about you know a girl and her brother who end up teaming up with the princess and they are being hunted while at the same time trying to bring equality for their people and stop the oppression of the Magi of their people and oh my gosh, such a beautiful book. So excited, loved, like I said, I read the second one this year, so I'm not gonna give too much a summary of that one. In case you haven't read the first one, which is Children of Blood and Bone, please, please go read it if you haven't. It's, oh, it's so good. Why not? If, if the synopsis didn't sound interesting, go read it, and then you're gonna find yourself entrapped in the story anyway, because it's a magnificent book. Number eight is a book I read way back in January because this is a historical fiction that I read and I have recently talked about in another video, but it is Juliet by Anne Fortier and this follows both modern times and ancient times because it is the story of Romeo and Juliet. It goes back and forth between what actually happened in Romeo and Juliet and what's happening to a girl named Juliet in modern days who is said to be the great 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 however many greats granddaughter of Juliet and so she spends modern day she goes to Italy and she learns of her family history and she tries to uncover the mystery of what actually happened way back when and she kind of gets chased by some people trying to also figure this out but the, this information in the wrong hands could be very bad and so it's very interesting because in this version 
Juliette's her last name is different. In this version, her name is Giulietta Tolome, and I love saying that because I don't speak Italian, but I listen to the audiobook, and Italian is beautiful, so I just have a lot of fun sitting here going, Giulietta Tolome. <laughs> um, the, the reason why this book is on this list is because I loved the side characters. I loved exploring Italy. Like, this is a great book to read if you're, uh, missing travel much like I am. It takes you to, on a beautiful journey to Italy all around, all the historical sites. Um, but for me, it was really the side characters. For example, Juliet's twin sister, who just made it for me. Like, oh, loved her. Um, and so, yeah, I would definitely say the whole, it's more the idea of the plot and the side characters that was really good about this book. I believe it's a four out of five stars for me. Um, because I wasn't that big a fan of the protagonist, but that's just because I feel like she didn't do too much other than be the person who we're solving the mystery with. I felt like she didn't have as much of a strong character as I would have wanted as, in our protagonist, but that's also just my personal opinion. I would still highly recommend for you to read it if, it, if any aspect of it sounds interesting. So like I said, it kind of goes back and forth between Shakespeare and nowadays, so that's really cool. Now, the last two books that are on this list are both books that were recommended to me, and I don't own them, but I kind of want to. The first one being Snowflower and the Secret Fan. This is a much older book, and it's about ancient China-ish. Like, it's way back, I don't quite remember when the date is, and I'm not very good at history, but it follows the life of a Chinese woman from when she was a little girl. It starts off with, um, talking about foot binding and the experience she and her sister had with that as well as finding a lifelong best friend and then also being married off at uh bearing being married off to a husband joining that family in that household and um just the life experiences she went through it is fiction but it's based off of what could have what was um so it's it was just absolutely a beautiful story of pain, uh, duty, culture, love, like it just, and I'm not really one for nonfiction and realistic fiction. I felt like this was a historical realistic fiction. Um, I think it's the best way to describe it because it is very realistic, even if it's not exactly one person's life. Um, and so, yeah, it was very educational for me to learn about uh, ancient China, but it was also like a good story, like it was very entertaining. And it's a very short book, but it's very dense and very heavy um, with both the topics that they talk about as well as just the events that happen. Um, so I really enjoyed this one. I believe it's a four out of five stars. Um, it's definitely not a perfect book, obviously, but it just, it just has a special place in my heart. It really does. Now we are on the last book, the 10th book, the 10th best book that I've read of 2020 so far this year. Um, and I had a hard time between choosing two books. And so I will say one book and then another will have an honorable mention. So the one I ended up going with is The Love and Lies of Ruchana Ali. And this is a very good book about a girl whose parents are from uh, Bangladesh. But she was born and raised in the States, but she has gone to Bangladesh quite a bit to visit her family, which is amazing. However, Rukshana has a secret, and that is that she is actually gay, and her parents do not know. And she also knows if she told them, they would not take it very well. Until they find out, and she kind of gets busted with her girlfriend, and so her parents um, send her back to Bangladesh to live with family and convince her that she's not gay even though that's not how it works so it's just a very uh it's like a very emotional journey of like loving your family but also not being accepted for who you are in your family and how sad and how hard that can be on someone and it just oof oof i don't I, there's not too much more i want to say about the plot because i don't want to end up giving things away but yeah, The Love and Lies of Rukshana Ali, I got that from the library and I loved it. It just, the emotion in it, the events, I just, 
it was definitely something that kind of not necessarily opened my eyes or made me alert of as it's some one of those things that like in the back of my head yeah obviously that must exist but it's not something that was really ever talked about but yeah i love this video because i love the characters and i loved the emotion and just the passion that really went into this book was amazing to read um and then the book that i'm gonna say gets an honorable mention uh so it's gonna be an honorary 11th in this uh, video haha -ha, there you go you get a special 11th actual favorite book and that is uh, Bala Santiago and the River of Tears this book is really cool because it is based off of Mexican mythology it's it's cool because like Rick Riordan helped like publish it or something but it's not specifically his work but if you like Rick Riordan's work if you like different mythology of different cultures and kind of going on adventures to figure out mysteries revolving around mythology and culture um, then I highly suggest giving this book a read. Um, yeah, it deals, you know, they make mention of everyone knows about the Chupacabra, but there's so much more to mythology, to Central American Mexican mythology than that. And it was really cool to just kind of finally get that in a story so that it's not just all a bunch of European mythologies that are popular, um, but make it really mythology fiction from around the world. So Paula Santiago is... Oh, She's so sweet. She is such an intellectual mind for like a, what is she, like 12, 13 year old. She's like super, she's pretty, she's a younger protagonist, but she's so scientific and analytical of everything. And she's like, I refuse to believe that the mythology that my mother believes is true. But then she ends up going on this adventure to save her friend and she has to kind of make sense scientifically of the mythology and it's so cool so that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed the top 10 11 books that i read this year in 2020 thus far um comment down below letting me know what some of your favorites are so that if i haven't read them i can and hopefully we can enjoy them together um and if i have read them then maybe we can discuss them more uh feel free to subscribe i post every thursday so hit the bell so that you'll know exactly when on thursdays i post and feel free to like this video because liking is fun and it's it's nice for people. Um, so that's all I have to say. So until I see you guys in the next video, I wish you a happy reading.